Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel video, and today we are going to look at some replays uh, of my Mikanko deck. So I decided I do want to do a little bit more Yu-Gi-Oh! content on the channel, but like the the deck profiles take a long time and they're few and far between. Like I can't just put out deck profiles all the time. So I figured why not let's just show gameplay with the decks that I've done profiles on and just get a better look at these decks. So um, it is now mid-October and we do have the Duelist Cup going on right now. So what I did was I basically played Duelist Cup until I had 10, I felt like, solid replays to show you guys. So let's just hop in and I'll just commentate over these replays and kind of talk about what's happening in the deck, showing off the combos and things like that. Um, once again, think of this as maybe an extension of the last video um, to kind of just see the Mikankos in action. I really like them. They're my favorite, probably my favorite deck in the game right now for sure. All right. So right here, I mean, this doesn't seem like a crazy starting hand. It looks like we're going against Dogmatica here. But the thing is, is I've got, you know, Pot of Extravagance and I've got Ohime. So I've got two kind of outs to get into something. And we drew uh, Mayawashi Dori, which isn't the craziest right now. Um, Pot got ashed, right? Now here's the thing. I'm going to pause it for a second. Um, I usually smile when they ash Pot uh, because... What it means is, is Ash is in the graveyard and I can bring it back if I need to. Now, they do have a Dogmatica body on board, so it's not a big deal. But I actually really like getting Ash sometimes because it puts a body in the graveyard I can summon. So, luckily, we have Ohime. And then they Max C. So, I kind of decide here, that's fine. Max C won't draw anything on Ohime searching. I just have to consider, do I want a special summon or not? Or do I, do I kind of want to play it light? I, you know, get rid of my extra equip. I just decide to normal summon and do my Dori search for trap. I decide I'm just not going to special. Like, I could have done it, but I didn't. Let's just play it light, attack in, Mayawashi Dori to bounce it so that it makes it harder for them to do more plays next turn. And we're kind of good, and I got two traps down. Once again, Hu Li alone with just an equip card, a lot of times is good enough to, like, survive. Um, once again, if the opponent can't target you, like, it makes things very difficult, right? So, all right, they're going to do some Shadal stuff. That's fine. They're going to start banishing some things. I'm going to play Rivalry to equip it, <laughs> and I'm going to play Promise to bring out my own monster, right? So I got a couple things going on here, because they're trying to, like, mess with my graveyard. So let's get that. Let's equip with Axe of Fools, so it gets negated. That's fine. Promise I probably didn't need to do there, because I didn't actually have a proper equip card. Um, but that's okay. So yeah, we are going to lose Ha Ray there. But that's fine. But they attacked me. My Awashi Dori could still bounce. Now they've got a 3,800 beater for me to just like swing into here, right? Um, of course, drawing more uh, uh, of the fire equip card, they're not really useful at the moment. So we'll discard one of them. We don't need both of those. Rivalry now triggers because I discarded one. I can add it back to hand. So that is, I just want to say that right now, that is a nice little trick you can do is if you have Rivalry in Graveyard, right? What it does is anytime you discard an equip card, um, you can bounce, or and yeah, anytime an equip card is sent to the graveyard, your equip card sent to the graveyard, you can banish it to return one to your hand. So it's a trick you can do with Ohime, where if you don't really have anything you want to discard, but you have rivalry in the graveyard, you can just discard any equip, banish rivalry, and just take it right back. So uh, it's kind of cool. So essentially, you can kind of banish rivalry for the Ohime cost. And now they've got Ash out. I'm like, sure, I'll just bring the Ash out for funsies. Because um, then I can do Water Arabesque on Ash, Send Ash back to their hand, which normally you don't want to send Ash back to their hand. But we got them negated out. We can attack through. We got game easy here. I'll bounce their trap just to make sure it isn't anything crazy. And then on the construct, we just crush them out. So, um, yeah. So that's the nice thing is, like, even if they have a big body on board, uh, you know, with your uh, fire spell card, remember you can summon from their graveyard, right? So even if they already have a big monster, though, summoning something like Ash or just, like, something else back is good if I want to have a target for Arabesque just to like equip it and then put a free body on my board, right? Now, normally, had I not been in like a winning situation there, I definitely wouldn't recommend bouncing Ash back to their hand because then they can Ash you again. But in that instance, I knew it was fine. All right, here goes another match. Now here, this, I'm going to tell you this right now. Okay, I'm going to pause it for a second. When I open up Lava Golem and hit an Armory, that is like super good because it means that they put two bodies on board I know Hidden Armory is going to get me in my double-edged sword. I just have to get a Mikanko to equip. And we do have Pot and we have Reinforcements. So we got plenty of ways to search out the Mikanko. So this has the makings of an OTK hand. Let's see what happens with the opponent here. 
Okay, oh, and this is Runix, right? Or no, Ninjas, okay. I haven't really played against Ninjas, so I don't really know what they do, but it looks like they do a lot of face down flip effects. But look at this beautiful, juicy board they give me. They just give me the Lava Golem fodder. Like I have instant game here, right? Depending on what their traps do. So they play that. Like if they get a Ninja off board, it could be troublesome. But yeah, as long as they keep two bodies on board, we're good. And uh, we got two fire dances in hand. So yeah, here we go. Here comes Lava Golem. Here's Hidden Armory to get me into my double-edged sword, <laughs> right? This just gets me giddy. Uh, we'll do that. Bring Ha Ray back. Sure, let's search out another equip. Let's grab Arabesque. Why not? Double-edged sword and then bam, it's game. I don't even have to do anything else. 10k special, you're out of here. Get out of here. So that's the nice, easy, quick kill. I love that. Like I said, when I saw that hand, I was like salivating. Like, oof, that's a spicy hand. We like those for sure. So there's a nice example of a quick kill there. There are going to be, like, as I get higher up in the Duelist Cup, you'll see I, I do go against some, like, very top-tier meta-type stuff. Um, and, and the matches aren't always that fast. But I feel like I got a good mix of things in here, right? All right, here comes another hand. So, Ha-Ray, we've got pots. we got some equips. Like, this seems like an okay-ish hand, right? Like, especially depending on what we get with the pot. So here we're going against Trap Tricks. Now, Labyrinth, for example, is a deck that can give me trouble because they have a lot of non-targeting stuff that can destroy my spell cards. So that deck does give me trouble. Trap Tricks here, I don't think we have too much trouble with this uh, this one here. And once again, I love when they put more than one body on board because if I happen to get into my Lava Golem, they're going to be in trouble. And I do draw Lava Golem quite a bit. I feel like I open with it a lot. All right, so we're here. Yeah, I'm going to actually speed up here because they're just doing like a huge, you know, they're just going crazy. All right, so we're going to get to where they're done. We'll get to my turn. But yeah, they just set up their trap tricks board, whatever they want. So getting double pot. So this is an example of why I'm not a huge fan. Like in my real life deck, I don't run more than one pot um, because I don't like drawing two of them because you can only play one per turn. Whereas hidden armor, you can play all three in one turn. Oh, but look at this. We got into lava golem with it. And then we got preparation of rights to go into Ohime. <clears throat> that was a huge pot. Like, that was a huge draw there. Bouncing the Sarah, going into Hulia. Now they're just at my mercy. We've pretty much destroyed their board. This is why I love about Mechanko. It is a board destroyer. Like, it just wrecks boards. Uh, and that's, that's what we got here. I, I'm like, sure, you can do all your maxi stuff. I don't care. Like, we're going to get game here. Uh, pretty darn close to it. Actually, not quite. We're going to have 6k, aren't we? So let them draw a little bit. Okay, you're going to target that. That's fine. You can't target anything else, so we're good. Then we'll just bounce it right back, sure. So yeah, we didn't get game there, but it's like this field, we're fine. Because once again, you see where the, the not being able to target really hurts. Yeah, we're only 1,000 away from winning there because Lava Golem burned them another 1,000. So sure, we'll let them go their turn and see what they can kind of cook up here. So go ahead and do your track strip your trap trick stuff see if you can get through this uh if you can get by this board here the you know what i like about mikanko sure what are you going to destroy <laughs> they brought out nightmare phoenix they couldn't destroy anything they had no you can't target anything so i'm sure they intended to bring out nightmare phoenix to destroy something and they couldn't and then they just give up because they don't know what to do they can't target me they can't get rid of my board they don't know what to do so you know what they just give up it's so fun when you play against people that don't like fully understand the deck and like what it's doing. Um, and you can really catch people off guard. All right, on to the next replay. On to the next one. All right, let's see what we got here. I think sometimes, you know, if anybody would be interested, I potentially would like to stream Master Duel and just like play like while chatting with people. Oh, look at this spicy hand. Uh, once again, I see Lava Golem. I like that. But he only dropped one monster now. Okay, so this is a blue eye stack. Um, I'm pretty sure I do some shenanigans here though, right? So I play prep. Yep, do this. And I'm pretty sure I like bait out their maiden. Um, because I think I want their maiden to go off, right? Alright, so we use Ohime. Yep, do that. Yep, we drop that. My Washi Dorian Graves. Yeah, so I equip it with Axe of Fools to bait the effect, right? Now, this is awesome because it's going to give me access to another body on board. So, sure, you're going to bring out your blue eyes. Guess what I have in my hand? <laughs> I have Lava Golem in hand. So, that was great because I could bait out the blue eyes. <laughs> and that's like, sure, I'll summon your blue eyes back to have an extra body. 
Because then guess what? I can search for Arabesque. I'm going to take that. And guess what? I'm going to bounce my Lava Golem back. You can keep the Blue Eyes, but I'll take Lava Golem for next turn. Like, seriously, what is my opponent going to do here? So we're going to swing. We're going to swing. And guess what? You put up a big board and somehow if you don't OTK me, you've got Lava Golem coming at you again next turn. So like, seriously, what are you going to do at this point? So we'll let them see how they try to deal with it. <clears throat> They're just searching away. And then, sure, they just battle and they just attack me because they have no idea what to do. They, they have no play. So <laughs> they are done. Once again, I, so what's really cool about the deck is I love how you can manipulate the opponent's monsters on board, right? Um, especially to get Lava Goal in place or just to put bodies out for you to attack. Like, they designed this deck so well. It's literally like the concept of what Gustos are supposed to be, but they, they designed it so much better and more consistent to like really focus on the the, the digustos freeze element um where because like gusto like just has traditional like elements as well but this is like full on like i want to attack into you and kill you all right here comes a purely deck and i do see a lot of these um so and i'm pretty sure this is a, a pretty nice little match here i think we have a pretty good back and forth on this one this one isn't just like a clean easy win uh, i think there is a little back and forth on this one if i remember right i have fought quite a few purely decks um, so I could be blurring them together. All right, actually, I'm going to speed up their turn. Just I'm let's do sure set up your board. the The thing that's crazy about my Mikanko deck too is I know some people will run it with like hand traps, but I literally run no hand traps. Like the way I play the deck is I let you set up your board and then I break it. That's the way I play the deck, and that's the way I like to play it. Um, and it doesn't always work out right. Like sometimes I can't break the board, but a lot of times I can. All right, so they've got their huge purely all beefed up, whatever. Their win rate is whatever. I got, you know, I don't know. I, I've got a good hand here, right? And once again, you're seeing the draw cards. You're seeing the search cards. I got a lot of stuff here. So, all right, they're doing a million purely things. All right, let me have my turn, please. All right, here comes Pot. Does Pot go through or do they ash me? Pot goes through. And I draw into Ohime. So we'll prep for another Ohime. I can always just discard the oh Ohime, right? So now they ash me, which is interesting that they wait to ash on the Ohime. So they're a pretty smart player uh, because the Ohime was the good one to ash. So they did well there. Um, so I'm going to summon. They're going to detach. They're going to bounce. That's fine. I'm just baiting out effects at this point. Now I'm going to summon out Ohime with Ceremony. And then remember, Ohime can equip from Grave. So I can banish Ceremony to send the take control of you. Or no, Arabesque. Yes. And then I can do Arabesque on their monster. Bounce it, yep, and then get Huli out. They're going to combo with their quick play stuff, that's fine. But I was able to kind of dig through, th that's the other thing I like about this deck, is it can persevere and it can bait through negates, right? And like it has enough plays where I can just work my way through negates, and then they're at 4,000 defense. They they had just a little bit of life because they had gained life from one of their purely cards. Otherwise, we almost had game right there. Almost had game, and then I can just rivalry try to equip it and guess what i'm going to equip it with can you all guess <laughs> i'm pretty sure i remember what i tried to equip it with here so we'll let all these effects go so i'm like i'm going to bring that out i'm going to do that and guess what i'm going to equip you yep i'm just going to take control of your guy and then they give up because i took their guy because that, that's the way purely is right they get the monster with all of the equips on it or all of the overlay material on it right and i just took it so like all right i'm done <laughs> All right, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, which one? That was pretty good. Let's go up to this one. I might have skipped one, but I don't want to like repeat them. We'll do this, and then there'll be three more after this. But yeah, I like kind of going through these replays. But yeah, this has kind of been my adventures in the Duelist Cup here. And I think I'm on Duelist rank like 11 right now. So, you know, I play when I can. All right, here we go. So yeah, anytime I see Lava Golem, Equips, Mechanicals, like this is a great... I just love opening Lava Golem. And it's funny, I've up to this point, I've never opened double Lava Golem in real life or in the game. So that's worked out really nice. So they didn't play any monsters, right? This is where like, I was actually just playing some in real life games actually yesterday and a Shura King came out huge. Like my opponent kept not summoning anything and I just Ashura King them and like hit them for 7,500. Ashura King is awesome. All right, so I'm just, basically when I have it set up like this, I kind of go minimum. I don't like summon a ton of Mikankos out. If I just get Hu Li in and equip, I'm good. And having the rivalry trap, I think, is good to deal with a monster effect. So, all right. And then they just set two. So I'm like, I don't even know what I'm playing here, right? Then they're going to ash me, sure. 
The Ash is actually very welcome because guess what I have? I've got Fire Dance and I've got Lava Golem. So this is my favorite combo. They put a body on board. I'm going to Fire Dance something out. I'm going to summon that. I'm going to Lava Golem over it. And then it's GG's from there. I'm going to Rivalry. Guess what I can Rivalry? Double-Edged Sword, 5k special. Here you go. You're out of here. Done. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. I love the manipulation. Uh, once again, I don't even know what the deck was. Doesn't matter. We manipulated our way through it. <laughs> Got it done. All right. Last three. That was a fun one. I like that one. That one was good. <laughs> that was good. Very spicy indeed. All right, next fight here. What are we going against? Oh, guess what? Lava Golem. Likes to show up for me, right? My boy Lava Golem. And it's really nice because <clears throat> my opponent usually likes to go first. Now, see, here's the thing. I think, okay, notice that they went first. They just passed to me. And so either they had a brick hand or they're very savvy to what I'm doing because I think what opponents do is I won the coin toss and I chose to go second. So I think when, when people see that, they assume they're playing Mikanko, right? So I assume I'm playing against a very smart player or somebody who had a really dead draw. So I'm like, all right, what can we do? Do I decide to play it safe or try to force the issue here a little bit? We've got Lava Golem and we got Hidden Armory. So I'm like, I'll save that combo for next turn because I decide to use my normal summon here, right? So we just Arabesque into Huli. And once again, this is my bare minimum setup. I just get Huli and something in a trap and I, I, I feel good with this field. I'll see how my opponent wants to play it. They don't summon again. So I'm like, all right, so they really want us to push the issue. So what I'll do is I'll just double-edged sword my own card. Because you can double-edged sword your own card. And I'll get another equip here. Sure, we'll take that. Take another Arabesque. We'll banish that. Put something into the graveyard. We'll put the water. So I've got access to all three now. We can summon. I've got all three. So this would be an instance in real life. I would have exceeded all those into a Shura King. And we would swing for 7,500. Um, and if I could put a little extra damage, we can actually OTK almost, but I'm like, let's double edge sword there because that's going to be 4k. So I'm like, all right, you're not going to do anything. I'll force the issue. And guess what? I just tagged you for over half your life and I still have a who on board. And then guess what? Now my vulnerable monster, I can just arabesque it out and put up a Mikanko board again. So I linked out, did a bunch of damage. Now I still have Mikanko board and then they're done. <laughs> like they just, they didn't know how to deal with it. Right. And I think. I think they were a smart player that knew what they were going against. But dude, good Mikanko players, you can't just say pass. Because they set up, good Mikanko players will have an extra deck and we will put pressure on you. Like, we will force the issue. So, uh, you can't just pass with no board. You gotta have something. Uh, and it's hard, like, right? Because they don't want to put bodies out because I want them to have bodies out. Uh, it's so fun. Like... <laughs> It's been a while since I've gotten like really this much into a deck where I've played it a lot. So I feel like I'm getting pretty good with it. Pretty good with it. Once again, this is the Pure Mikanko. So here's another draw. Now this isn't a great hand initially because I've got Lava Golem, but it's all Mikanko equips that I can't really combo with. So if they don't, like if they summon two monsters, I, I mean, I do have Arabesque, so that's good because I, as long as they summon at least one monster, I can Arabesque out, right? So they're doing a reasoning play here. Oh, this is Runic. Yeah, this is the Runic deck I was thinking of. Um, I, I annoyed at all those pop-ups that keep coming up. Here, I want to go fast on their turn. I want to get past all this stupid Runic stuff. Just get, get your board set. Show me. That's kind of how I can play too. I don't have to worry about like when do I respond, hand trap, whatever. I'm like, just set up your board and then I'll, I'll figure it out from there. So just show me what your board is. Let's get there. So yeah, they're going to do that. All right, so they're done with their board. They're going to do their thing. So I've got some good things here, right? I have access to Ohime. Oh, and then hit an armory. That was such a good draw. And I'm like, yep, let's just Lava Golem immediately. Sure, you can play Rivalry. Now you're locked to you're locked to Pyro. So sure, <laughs> have fun with your Pyro field in your Runic deck. <laughs> you just locked yourself out. And I can deal with this. I can only bring out one monster and be fine. Because guess what? Hit an armory, double-edged sword. I'm seeing a 5k special on the way. We can Great Ceremony to get to Ohime. And then I can equip Lava Golem and we're out of here. <clears throat> sure, you can mill and banish. I don't care. Oh, they stall him it though, right? Here's... Oh, I love this play. Hold on. I got to tell you, I love this, okay? So I'm doing double-edged sword for game on Lava Golem. They stall on me. So they're paying half their life. So <laughs> they're basically killing themselves anyway, but watch what, what I can do. Well, guess what? I have Ohime on board. You stall him my double-edged sword? Sure. Have your fun little animation. Ohime... 
I, oh, he may's like, that's fine. I'm going to quick effect and just equip that to Lava Golem anyways. <laughs> so you just saw him for no reason and I still hit you for 10k. So, uh, see ya. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, he may been... Because Ohime's quick effect, it's not restricted to Mikanko. Any equip card in my graveyard, I can just quick effect equip it to you or me, whoever I want to. It's so amazing. All right, last replay for you guys. Last replay of the night. Um, this is fun. But I think I'm, I'm going to do this. Like, whatever deck I'm kind of on, we'll just, every once in a while, we'll just put up like 10, 10 replays and then just see what happens, right? Now, this hand here, this is actually fine. It, like, if I get ashed, like, this could be really bad. But I've got, you know, I've got two search cards and we draw into Huli. So now the hand is like really good. Sure. So I actually played that as bait. Like Ha Ray would have been fine. But what's more important is to get into Ohime. So sure, we bait out the Ash, which is fine, which is good because guess what? Now they have a monster in their graveyard. I like that. So we get into Ohime and now it's like, guess what I can search for? Oh, so then they gam so then they gamma me. And then like, all right, well, I'll just quick effect summon out anyway. So, uh, you know. We'll do it. That's fine. We'll just quick effect summon her when you try to Gamma me. Gamma's still going to come out, which is fine. You can put bodies on board. <clears throat> her effect is still negated. That's fine. I don't care. Yeah, you can just really negate her effects. I don't care. So I'm going to Arabesque that, get Ha Ray, search her and equip. Now they're going to Imperm. So, I mean, we're getting a lot of stuff negated out here, right? So it's like, all right, this is kind of interesting. I can't just go crazy here. I got two of my monsters are negated out. So now I can banish that. I can put my Awashi Dory in and now I can link off into something. And then those bodies are in the graveyard for my Awashi Dory. So now we go into a Fire Charmer just to have a body, right? And then we can summon their Ash and then I can link it all off. So this was great where I went into like a deeper link play because I usually don't do that. We actually ran into an access code talker. So I used all of my negated monsters. And then guess what? I can Mayawashi Dory and still have my Huli out. <laughs> so another instance of me, like I can put out a big body and I can still swing into you and do stuff. And I can swing in and bounce and I can swing for 43. So we'll do that. That was a nice little turn, right? And now um, with the new set that just came out in real life, I actually got SP Little Knight. I think you could make use of her in this deck. So they summon Archeosaur. They're going to link off. That's fine. You can link off. I don't know what you're going to do. Rivalry sent to the grave, but guess what? I can get an equip card back, so I've got something for next turn. <clears throat> okay, you're going to link again into the Secure Gardener. That's fine. All right, and then what? And then I'm just going to bounce you. So he was attacking, I think, to go into some other plane. I just bounced it with my Awashi Dory, and then I just swing for games. So... Yeah, anyways, guys, there you go. There was some of my Duelist Cup experience so far with Mikanko. I'm just rising in the ranks like no problem. Now, don't get me wrong. This wasn't like 10 in a row. I did have a couple of losses here and there. But like for the most part, I'm I'm usually winning with this deck right now. It's working out really well. So anyways, let me know what you think of the Mikanko deck. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you all on the next one.